sir? Yes, we can. OK. So before I start, I like to thank to the organizers, especially Medical Physics Foundation, uh, Pakistan Organization of Medical Physicists, form, and uh, especially Mr. Asad Yusuf, AKUH team, for organizing this event. So regarding honoring and paying tribute to Faiz Ahmed Khan, Faiz Muhammad Khan, and celebrate his achievements. Many of them was still unknown to me, especially thanks to Mr. Dr. Ibrar, have excellently provided the insight about journey and contribution and achievements of Faiz Khan. He is definitely a legend and mentor in his field. We can feel proud about knowing that he's our fellow uh, national citizen that's from Pakistan. So, agar lastly, officially shuru karne se pehle agar main unke liye apni zuban mein ek izhar karna chahu to kehte hain bare duniya mein raho ghamzada ya shaad raho bare duniya mein raho ghamzada ya shaad raho aisa kuch karke chalo ke bahut yaad raho so definitely sir faiz khan have done a lot and contributed a lot in the field of medical physics radiation physics everyone working in the radiation therapy know him very well so so we are about to start in the our topic that is measurement of ionizing radiation so this will be the layout of the presentation we will discuss about the initial work and the units introduced that is exposure ranjan free air ion chamber thimble chamber uh, from thimble chamber to onward electrometer special chambers and chamb and collection that will be discussed by my fellow colleague dr atiya gur i will introduce her after free air and chamber discussion so just to make the session interactive this is the first question for the audience if the moderator or uh, asad you can show it in the zoom poll just a brainstorming that which one of the following is not a thimble chamber you can record your opinion in the zoom poll asad it is showing Yes, it's fine. You can continue. Okay. So, in the early days, at the very start, in the physics, especially in the every physical sciences, we come across any unit or any quantity. We need to quantify it or we need to measure it. So, in the early days, ionizing radiation was measured by the radiation effects on uh, chemical or the biological effects. using photographic emulsion changes in the color of some chemical compounds and reddening of the skin and the unit was introduced or the understanding was used that is scd skin erythema dose that's the amount of radiation that just produce reddening of skin in 1928 to formalize it and to make it a standard icrju adopted ronjan as the unit of measuring x rays and gamma rays and that is briefly defined everyone knows that is the charge per unit mass and ronjan is value is 2.5 per 10 per minus 4 charge per kg so the basic ion chamber or the initial that is known as free ion chamber this is the brief schematic diagram of that that initially the charge equilibrium or the energy produced by the photons by the x rays or photons are to be measured and the idea was that that all energy is uh, the all the energy is uh, deposited and pro charge are produced and all charges are collected in the gamma region from the source to the d is the diaphragm and then there are god wires collecting at electrodes and there is some length of the chamber through which it is possible so Uh, in free air and free air ion chamber there were certain conditions to fulfill to measure the exposure accurately that is electron in the spectral volume must spend all their energy between the plates that is definitely difficult to achieve and there are certain limitation we will discuss in the later slide and existence of electronic equilibrium that is constant beam intensity across the length of the specified volume there are different mathematical representation of uh, uh, describing it here in the first one the ap is the cross sectional area 
and ad in the uh, next equation is the diaphragm aperture area so before uh, using free air chamber correctly there are certain corrections to measure the deposited dose accurately that is air attenuation ion recombination environmental factors temperature pressure humidity definitely and ionization produced by the scattered photon and considering these limitations this is only used in the standard battery to calibrate the field instruments and it cannot be used for higher energies because the range of electron liberated in the air increases with the beam energy and requiring the increase in the separation of plates to main, maintain the electronic equilibrium so all beam energies that we come across nowadays with the linear accelerator that 6 mv 15 mv 10 mv so we cannot use free and chamber for that because of its bulk is uh, and delicate protein uh, size and we cannot use it routinely so with these limitation it is its use is limited so we cannot use it for all our day to day uses so further on with this presentation i will invite dr atiya bol to present um, from chimbal chambers with onward regarding this chapter i will just like to introduce dr atiya that basically i feel that he is the best person to represent and talk about this topic because she has recently done his phd on the topic of small field dosimetry and i think she is the pioneer doing phd in the field of medical physics and the brief introduction is that she is serving as a medical physics principal scientist at i know since 2009 and she has completed her phd in medical physics from pyas in 2020 her phd work was on small field dosimetry that is essential for the state of our technique of rt she has worked on the different detectors including ion chambers diodes and ebrt films to investigate their behavior in small field furthermore she has also employed monte carlo simulation for dosimetry in small fields during her phd she also worked in nirs national institute of radiological sciences japan where she worked on carbon ion radiation therapy particularly its dosimetry part after her phd she has played a leading role in commissioning of new linux and tps installed at ino and starting of imrt for cancer patient for the first time at any public sector hospital in kpk so so just i want to introduce and invite dr atiya and before starting i just like to uh, invite him with the verse that kon baaton mein unse jeetega jinki aankhein kalam karti hain so over to dr atiya gur please Thank you, Mr. For nice introduction. Um, so, in this presentation, actually, we have followed the same uh, pattern and layout as uh, described in Chapter Six of uh, Fazem Khan's book, um, starting from uh, free air ionization chamber, and then uh, we will discuss. thimble chambers uh different commonly used thimble chambers including farmer chamber and uh, then some special chambers uh, also we will see how electrometers uh, are used to measure the charge and uh, then we will see some parameters that may affect the ion collection uh, of these ion chambers and how can we uh correct these uh these chambers so as um, bashir sahab has already told about free air ion chamber basically free air ion chamber uh is most widely used type of uh, dosimeter for precise measurement uh of radiation uh however uh it is Uh, if it can be used uh, it uh, for absolute dosimetry without requiring any calibration and it is possible only if the uh, volume of air is accurately known because you know x ray uh, exposure is the uh, quotient of uh, 
dq to dm and if dm or volume of air is accurately known then uh, we can measure exposure and we will not need any sort of uh, calibration but it has some limitation as uh, um, Bashar has already told that we cannot use it for higher energies of course we can uh, make it possible to use for higher energy but then uh, the distance between the plates would be very large and uh, that is not practical and that cannot be uh, will not make it compact as well and uh, that is why these types of free air ion chambers are used only uh, in standard laboratories and in these standard uh, laboratories these these are used to calibrate um, some compact chambers that we will see uh, next and uh, to overcome these limitations and there is another type of chamber that is called thimble thimble chamber this is very compact in size and uh, these chambers are actually also called cavity ionization chambers because the these chambers work on the principle of cavity theory so this is the uh, principle this figure illustrates the principle of thimble chambers suppose we have a sphere of air that has a central cavity again air cavity and suppose the distance between this outer sphere and inner cavity wall uh, it is equal to the electron range uh, which electron the electrons that are produced by the um, incoming beam that needs to be measured so uh, if number of electrons entering in this cavity is equal to the number of electrons leaving the cavity then electronic equilibrium uh, exists in this air cavity that is the basic principle of cavity theory uh, now suppose we can measure the ionization charge that is produced in this air cavity by some means then uh, the charge collected in this air cavity uh, to the ratio of the mass of this air cavity it would give us true exposure uh, so the basic principle of cavity theory is that uh, this this shell is made of air if somehow we can compress this air shell into uh, some solid shell or we can choose a material that is uh, equivalent to air its effective number is e equivalent to air then we can also construct a thimble uh, chamber this is the basic principle of cavity theory and basic principle of uh, thimble chambers now what are the components of the chamber first chamber is uh, first component is chamber wall that is as i have already uh, to uh, tell you that it is air equivalent or air equivalent material uh, of course it cannot be there could not be solid air so air equivalent material could be graphite uh, effective z of graphite is z uh, is 6 whereas the effective z of uh, air uh, is 7.7 .7 almost and there could be some other materials too to construct the wall of this thimble chamber for example uh, backlight that is a type of polymer again its effective z is equal to uh, air and uh, also there could be some other polymers and the all these materials can be used to construct the wall of this thimble chamber shape of this uh, chamber wall is like a sewing thimble and its inner surface is coated with some uh, conducting material and that conducting material um, forms one electrode so one electrode is the chamber wall or the 
uh, inner coating of this chamber wall. There is another electrode that is called central electrode and also collecting electrode. And uh, this electrode is made of uh, low Z material like aluminum and it is placed in the center of the uh, thin wall. So suitable voltage is uh, in a thin wall chamber, suitable voltage is applied between these two electrodes to collect the ions that are generated in this So, these are the components of a thimble chamber. Uh, however, these thimble chambers require calibration. Let me tell you that these thimble chambers can measure exposure directly as well without requiring any calibration, only if it is really water, uh, it is really air equivalent. Second condition is that if cavity volume is accurately known. And the third condition is that wall thickness of this thimble chamber is sufficient to provide electronic equilibrium. If these three conditions are met, then we can measure exposure using this uh, formulation, uh, where Q is the charge of ions produced in the cavity of the thimble chamber. Rho is the density of uh, air or gas that, has, that is enclosed uh, inside this uh, cavity. V is the volume of this uh, cavity. And uh, A is a correction factor. Uh, A is basically a fraction of energy influence that is transmitted through the uh, chamber wall. So uh, true what air equivalence it is not possible. And also when we use some former or former type chamb chambers or thimble chambers in our routine dosimetry in radiation therapy machines, uh, we, we accurately, it is not possible to know a volume of this uh, air accurately. And also measurement of this A that is a correction factor. It is also a challenge. So it becomes almost impossible to construct such thimble chambers that requires calibration, especially at higher energies that are used in our clinic, like 6 MeV, 10 MeV, uh, 10 MV, and uh, also other uh, energies. So in this formula of exposure, uh, if we can find a way, um, that we don't need to find, uh, to know the accurate volume, then of course uh, we can measure exposure. For that purpose, uh, our timber chamber can be calibrated against some other chamber, uh, against, against some other ionization chamber whose uh, volume is accurately known. Then we don't need to uh, know the, uh, the volume of our thimble chamber. At lower energies, these chambers, thimble chambers that are used in clinic, um, they can be calibrated against free air ion chambers for low energy X-rays. However, for high energy uh, X-rays, these uh, thimble chambers can be calibrated against standard cavity chamber, um, like farmer chamber with water equivalent walls. And uh, again, these standard cavity chambers, uh, they, their volume is accurately known. And then we don't need to uh, have a knowledge of accurate volume of our thimble chamber. And other important factor uh, that is required is uh, one over A that is called correction factor. Uh, actually, this correction factor is required for zero wall thickness. Uh, it can be obtained by plotting a curve of chamber response against wall thickness, wall thickness of thimble chamber. We see initially 
uh, when wall thickness is not uh, sufficient, then and it, it wall thickness is less than the range of electrons, then electronic equilibrium would not exist. And very few electrons would be generated in the wall. That is why chamber response would be low. After electronic equilibrium, again, chamber response is decreased with the increase in uh, wall thickness. And now this decrease is due to the attenuation of these electrons. So if we uh, extrapolate this uh, chamber response to the zero wall thickness, we can um, get a chamber response at zero wall thickness. That is our requirement. Zero wall thickness means uh, there is no chamber when we are irradiating, uh, when we measure ionizing radiation, uh, or there is no perturbation. That is the basic principle of cavity theory. So in this way, we can measure the fluence at zero wall thickness. And, uh, this, and this, this fraction factor is used for the measurement of exposure uh, for our thimble chambers. So uh, thimble chambers has many uh, advantages over the free air ion chamber. The first uh, advantage that I would like to uh, describe is its compact size. Its size is very compact as compared to free air ion chamber because you know in free air ion chamber there is a bulky box of lead and uh, uh, and other advantage is that um, it can be used for multi-directional beams. However, for uh, free air ion chamber, uh, only monodirectional beam can be measured, uh, having direction perpendicular uh, to the uh, free air ion chamber. But in case of thimble chamber, multi-directional beam can be measured because it has some uh, it has energy. Uh, sorry, angular independence. So uh, all these uh, advantages uh, make it uh, very practical for uh, use in the clinic for the calibration of our beams. What uh, are the other desirable chamber characteristics for thimble chambers? It must show minimal variation in sensitivity or exposure calibration factor for a wide range of photon energies. And other important uh, characteristic is that it must have suitable volume uh, to allow measurement for the expected range of exposure. That is, it should not be that large and it should not be that small. Its volume must be suitable. And also uh, its sensitivity must be uh, independent of the direction of incident radiation that is called angular dependency, angular independence. And also it must have minimum uh, stem leakage because you know, for free air ion chamber, uh, stem leakage and ion recombination, these were uh, the factors that were uh, uh, making it impractical for uh, high energies. Also, thimble chambers should have been calibrated for exposure against a standard instrument um, for all radiation qualities for which exposure is to be measured. Uh, that is again, that has again been resolved by uh, measurement and by uh, applying the energy correction factor given in uh, IAEA uh, code of practice for dosimetry, TRS-398. Also, and other desirable characteristic is minimal ion recombination uh, loss. So uh, there are different types of uh, thimble chamber uh, and these chambers can be used for, uh, can be used in real time as well as uh, these uh, thimble chambers can be used without any uh, wires. Uh, initially, condenser chambers were used uh, that did not require any sort of uh, uh, wire, 
and uh, but these uh, condenser chambers were very bulky and they could not be used uh, in real time measurement however farmer chamber is a chamber that can be used for uh, measurement of radiation in real time in 1955 farmer designed a chamber that was later modified by aird and farmer and this chamber gives us a stable and reliable secondary standard for measurement of uh, x rays and gamma rays for all energies that are used in therapeutic use this chamber is connected to electrometer that would read uh, that would give us charge this is the um, basic diagram of uh, farmer chamber schematic diagram of farmer chamber this is the wall of thimble chamber wall of farmer chamber it is made of graphite and uh, you know graphite is a conducting material so this graphite wall acts as outer electrode and then uh, there is an inner electrode or central electrode made of aluminium 1 mm its diameter is 1 mm and uh, this central electrode is connected to the electrometer and uh, these are the exact dimensions that were uh, of the farmer chamber that was designed by the farmer so if we see the energy de uh, dependence of this farmer chamber you can see that beyond 0.3 mm uh, copper hvl its response is almost constant we don't see any variation in the response of the thimble chamber however for lower energies its response may vary up to 4% so that is why uh, it can be used uh, for all those energies having uh, 0.3 mm copper hvl uh, and above what are the components of uh, actually farmer farmer chamber is the chamber that was uh, originally designed by farmer now many commercially available farmer type chambers are available and uh, basically they have copied the design of farmer uh, chamber but its composition of the wall material or the electrode could vary from chamber to chamber uh, like uh, ptw uh, ipa chambers there uh, there is slight variation in the uh, composition of their wall material and central electrodes like that so components of any farmer type chambers could be chamber wall that is uh, usually you know um, in actual farmer type chamber this wall was made of graphite but now in many commercially available farmer type chambers it could be made of some plastic or some polymer including pmma nylon or some air equipment material uh, all these materials are almost air equipment they have uh, effective z slightly lower than that of air and the wall thickness is in the range of 0.04 to 0.09 uh, gram per centimeter square uh, this wall thimble chamber wall uh, if it is made of graphite it can act as outer electrode otherwise if it is made of some plastic then it is coated with graphite and that uh, in inner coating of graphite acts as uh, outer electrode central electrode in all these chambers is usually made of aluminum of uh, diameter 1 mm it is basically the collector electrode that delivers the ionization current to the uh, charge measuring device that is called electrometer in farmer type chambers there is an uh, there is an additional third electrode called as uh, guard electrode and this guard electrode um, is um, usually present here its function is to reduce the leakage of any extraneous charge 
um, that is produced in the stem or uh, in this uh, part of the chamber. Uh, and this guard, uh, this guard electrode would not let discharge uh, to be collected by this collecting electrode. And these guard electrodes are kept at the same potential as the central electrode so that no leakage charge gets into this central electrode. So this was the basic uh, design of farmer type chamber. Uh, usually farmer type chambers, they have a volume of uh, about 0.6 cc, but on the, uh, 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 this design is also uh, available for other small uh, chambers like compact chamber or pinpoint chambers or uh, other small chambers. They, they are also basically thimble chambers, uh, but uh, again, their volume, cavity volume, their um, components, even the uh, composition of uh, the central electrode and the composition of wall would be different in those chambers. So uh, next, there is an other device called as electrometers that is used uh, to measure the charge collected by the central electrode, collected by this collecting electrode. This collecting electrode is connected to the electrometer that would read the charge. Uh, as you know, ionization current or charge that is produced in the ion chamber due to irradiation is very small. Therefore, special electrometer uh, circuits are designed to measure this small uh, charge or ion. Commonly used electrometers are usually negative feedback operational amplifiers and that are uh, denoted by a triangle here. In this operational amplifier, negative terminal is called inverting terminal and positive terminal is called non-inverting terminal. So these Operational amplifiers can be operated in three modes, integrated modes, uh, rate, dose rate mode, and direct reading mode. Uh, the schematic diagram of operational amplifier that can be used for uh, integrated mode is given here in figure A. Uh, the charge collected by the chamber collecting electrode of the chamber is stored in capacitor C and the voltage across this capacitor will give us, uh, that is Q over C, it would give us the reading of charge collected by this chamber and the magnitude of the uh, beam intensity. Similarly, it can also be used in dose rate mode uh, where capacitor is replaced by this resistor R. So when this chamber is irradiated by a beam, radiation beam, the ionization current uh, will pass through this resistor resistance and uh, it will give us uh, the voltage V is equal to IR. It would give us the um, ionization, uh, uh, ionization current that is uh, uh, actually um, directly related to the intensity of radiation beam. And similarly, it can also be operated uh, in direct reading to dosimeter mode, where uh, again, this uh, voltmeter, it would give us direct exposure reading in the form of Ronjan or Ronjan per minute. This is an example of a commercially available ion chamber and electrometer. This ion chamber is farmer type ion chamber, PTW model TN30013 ion chamber and CNMC electrometer based on operational amplifier. Uh, so uh, all these uh, farmer chambers and uh, farmer type ion chambers 
uh, their prerequisite is that they must they can be used only in uniform uh, radiation beam where dose gradient is uh, almost negligible that is why uh, when we are using formaldehyde chamber for our dosimetry we require a broad radiation field uh, say for a reference field size of 10 by 10 cm square uh, and the formaldehyde chamber is placed in the center of the radiation beam where um, radiation um, uh, beam is uniform and we cannot and uh, this format type chamber cannot give us reading accurately in the uh, penumbra region where dose gradient is high so uh, there are some cases uh, when the, uh, the electronic equilibrium does not exist or the dose gradient is high in those cases we require special chambers for example uh, for dosimetry, uh, for surface dosimetry, uh, you know, uh, surface dosimetry is uh, done in build-up region where dose gradient is high and also there is no charge particle equilibrium. And in those cases, we require special chambers. These special chambers, uh, the, the detector is usually uh, very thin along the direction of the beam. Uh, one of these special chambers is extrapolation chamber. Uh, these are again used for measuring surface doses. Uh, it consists, this extrapolation chamber consists of uh, a surface electrode or a per electrode. That is a carbon coated file. And then there is a small spacing, and then there is a collecting electrode uh, in the shape of small uh, coin. And this collecting electrode is uh, guarded by a gar guard ring. The spacing between uh, these two electrodes can be changed, can be varied with the help of and this micrometer and the this collecting electrode is connected to electrometer to measure the charge incident radiation falls on the outer upper electrode and uh, it produces ionization it produces ionization in the space between these two electrodes and then these ions are collected by the collecting electrode and measured by the electrometer. So this is the working principle of extrapolation chambers. There is another type of special chamber called as plane parallel chamber. Its design is similar to extrapolation chamber. The only difference is that this spacing between two electrodes is fixed and its spacing size is almost 2 mm, 2 millimeter. It has a thin wall uh, made of uh, 0.01 to 0.03 millimeter bilayer mica or polystyrene uh, that allows attenuation at the surface without significant wall attenuation. So there, the small spacing between the outer electrode and the collecting electrode, only two mm small um, spacing, this would minimize the cavity perturbation. You know, cavity perturbation becomes very high, especially in case of electron beams, low energy electron beams. And therefore, for low energy electron beams, again, uh, we cannot use farmer type chamber. And uh, in, in that case, we require, because the electrons uh, of the electron beam, they can, um, uh, they can affect the uh, uniformity of electric field and they can cause a significant perturbation in the electric field. In those cases, again, plane parallel chamber is the uh, best chamber uh, that would not cause any uh, significant perturbation in the electric field uh, between the spacing between these two electrodes. So uh, these plane parallel chambers are also used to measure dose in the buildup region. 
or for surface dosimetry again for um, measurement dose in a uh, uh, build up region we need to add a uh, layer of uh, phantom uh, above the surface of this uh, chamber so until now we have seen that ionization chambers are used uh, to measure the ionization produced by the x-ray or gamma ray uh, radiation beam these uh, x-rays and gamma rays they produce uh, ionization in the cavity of thimble chamber or some other um, former type chambers or special chambers and then these ions are collected by the collecting electrode and then uh, this signal is sent to the electrometer that reads uh, uh, the charge in different modes. And uh, uh, so uh, basically the basic mechanism is ion collection. Uh, there are many factors that can affect the ion collection uh, efficiency of a chamber. Uh, we, now we will see all these factors and parameters. There is a term called as saturation when we are talking about ion collection. Uh, as we increase the chamber voltage, ion current is increased. At low voltage, actually, initial increase in ion current is due to incomplete ion collection. As chamber voltage is increased, ion collection is increased and ion current is also increased because at lower voltage negative and positive ions and they tend to recombine unless they are quickly separated by the electric field uh, uh, due to this chamber voltage so then it comes a saturation region this saturation region uh, is the best region in which a thimble chamber can be used because in this region a uh, slight variation in uh, voltage would not affect the uh, reading of the uh, the chamber so this saturation uh, all these ion chambers are operated in this saturation region and this is usually 300 volt or um, above 300 volt there is another uh, term called as ion collection efficiency that is related to recombination effect. Ion collection efficiency is actually the ratio of the number of ions collected by the electrode of uh, thimble chamber to the number of ions produced in the cavity of uh, chamber. A certain number of ionization is lost by the recombination before it is collected by the uh, collecting electrode. And this uh, recombination effect increases in case of pulse beam because in pulse beam ionization intensity is very high. Uh, in these cases, especially, we need to apply recombination correction. And uh, best chamber is the chamber whose recombination correction factor is less than 1%. That is, ion collection efficiency is greater than 99%. So, um, pharma type chambers, all these chambers have uh, um, recombination correction of less than 1%. Ion uh, collection uh, for recombination correction, uh, there is a formation that was. Uh, um, uh, that was given by Bog and Almond et al. And they, they have provided this formula for continuous beam. We can use this formula uh, for calculation of uh, recombination correction factor, where V1 is the commonly used voltage and V2 is half uh, the V2. And M1 is the charge um, collected by the chamber at V1. M2 is the charge collected at 
V2. So by using this formula, we can measure, uh, we can calculate ion recombination uh, correction factor for continuous beam like uh, cobalt 60. And uh, for pulse beams like uh, uh, radiation beams of linear accelerator, they have given us another formula where A0, A1, and A2, these are uh, the coefficients provided by, again, uh, both and element. And uh, the table of uh, this A0, A1, A2 at different ratios of V1 to V2 is also given in table nine of uh, IAEA dosimetry code TRS398. So uh, by using these formulations, we can calculate uh, ion combination correction factor, and we can apply these ion combination correction factor for accurate of exposure. So and there is another effect, a stem effect. It occurs when uh, part of stem or part of cable, it is irradiated. It is in the radiation beam and uh, uses radiation induced signal. So electrons that are ejected from metal stem of the uh, chamber, they may reach the central electrode and can affect collected charge. Although the stem is usually very small and uh, it occurs uh, mostly with high energy radiation that is uh, larger than MME. However, this stem effect can be uh, controlled and can be made negligible applying um, guard, uh, guard electrode. Because guard electrodes, they, they are kept at the uh, same potential as that of central electrode. And uh, it, would not, uh, let, it would not let these electrons that are ejected from this metal stem to reach to the central uh, electrode and to uh, affect the uh, current or to affect the signal that would reach to electrolyte. The amount, this amount of stem effect is directly related to the length of the unguarded stem. That is the stem and uh, that has no guard uh, electrode. And so if larger uh, part of the uh, cable is irradiated, then uh, stem effect will be larger. And also it is a function of energy as well as type of beam, this photon beam, particle beam, because um, for a particle beam, for electron beam, stem effect will be higher. Stem effect can be uh, corrected. Uh, by using stem correction factor. And the uh, stem correction factor can be obtained as a function of stem and exposed in the field uh, with the help of this measurement setup. We uh, actually, the, the ion chamber along with stem is exposed in two directions. One is the, uh, I suppose this is source of radiation. One is the axial, direction and the other is radial direction. You can see in radial direction, um, this stem would remain out of the radiation. But in axial direction, this stem uh, can be irradiated. And especially when we uh, take all the, the these measurement at these different points, then different part of stem and different uh, part of the cables uh, different length of cables uh, would be radiated and would cause variation in stem effect. So with the help of this measurement setup, we can calculate stem correction uh, factor. Uh, stem correction is actually, uh, uh, stem effect becomes very high when we use um, ion chamber in axial direction. That's why for reference dosimetry, um, when we are using farmer chamber or farmer chamber, 
we uh, it is uh, recommended to use the chamber in real direction that is the uh, direction perpendicular to the axis of radiation beam uh, when stem all this and uh, cable is outside the the stem it is not possible to exclude them uh, from the radiation beam but at least cable of radiation cable of ion chamber can be excluded but in axial direction uh, there are some cases when we require to measure uh, radiation in axial direction especially in case of small field dosimetry when uh, we are measuring the collision factors for different uh, detectors uh, when we are measuring sorry output factors for different uh, sizes um, in axial direction uh, small volume of uh, a cylindrical type chamber cylindrical type chamber is exposed to radiation and uh, in that case volume everything effect and uh, would be very small and this direction is uh, recommended uh, to be used for small fields but in this case you will see a high polarity effect and high stem effect so in that case it will become unavoidable and definitely needs to be corrected there is an other effect uh, that affects the uh, reading of uh, uh, an ionization chamber both the thimble chamber as well as uh, other spare chambers like extrapolation chamber or parallel chamber this is called polarity effect if we change the polarity of cling electrode then ion charge uh, collected by the ion chamber may also change that should ideally be the same what could be the major cause first would be the compton current that is generated due to the compton electro, uh, electrons generated from the central electrodes and uh, which may add or reduce the collector current depending upon the um, voltage apply to the collecting electrode polarity sorry polarity of the uh, of the collected electrode and also there is an other reason that is extra cameral current or um, the current is uh, that arises due to stem effect so this extra cameral current can also be generated and collected outside the sensitive volume of the chamber cavity chamber this polarity effect can be uh, corrected by applying polarity correction factor using this formula and it depends upon the radiation beam that is energy and particle again polarity effect is high for um, electron beams and uh, low for photon beams and also polarity effect is uh, uh, low for high energy radiation it also depends upon the chamber design for example uh, although for uh, farmer type chamber it is usually very less for but in for small field chambers uh, polarity effect is very high in small field and it also depends upon the uh, irradiation condition that is uh, if the chamber uh, direction is uh, perpendicular to the radiation beam Um, the effect would be less, and uh, due to uh, uh, lesser external current, and if chamber direction or chamber orientation is uh, along the axis of radiation beam, then high extra cameral current would be produced, and polarity effect would be higher. However, uh, at least for reference dosimetry, it is recommended uh, that polarity we should use uh, an ion chamber whose polarity direction is less than 0.5% this is the correct and this is the statistic of a reference ion chamber and uh, there are some environmental conditions as well that may affect ion collection efficiency and these in temperature and pressure actually all these uh, environmental conditions are related to the 
density of air. If temperature is decreased or pressure increased, air density uh, would be decreased. Uh, sorry, air density would be increased. And in that case, if air density is increased, chamber uh, reading would be higher. So to account for all these environmental conditions uh, of temperature and pressure, we need to use this formula. When pressure is measured in kilopascal. So uh, once we have uh, measured all the reaction factors, then we can measure exposure in units of function in the timber chamber with these precautions and considerations. Same configuration should be used as in chamber uh, calibration. That is direction of uh, uh, direction or orientation of uh, chamber should be the same as was used in the, uh, during the chamber calibration in the standard free lab. And uh, also uh, we should avoid media other than air so that there is no uh, scattering. This is a formula of measurement of exposure where M is the charge collected by the ion chamber. And next is the calibration factor. And uh, uh, this is the correction factor for environmental condition, temperature, and pressure. Uh, this is the correction factor that incorporates stem correction as well as polarity correction. Uh, because to some extent, polarity correction includes correction. And then there is other correction factor, ion recombination factor. Uh, this ion recombination factor is very high in. Uh, free air ion chamber, but it is, uh, uh, but as I have already told, for a reference chamber, used for reference to symmetry, this value should not be uh, more than 1%. So this is the formula that can be used for measurement of this. Uh, so can you guess how, as, what is the formal uh, sorry, what is the chamber uh, used for surface dosimetry? Which chamber is used for surface dosimetry? Okay, Free air we, uh, we did the poll and uh, we got the result at 50% answer for parallel plate chamber and 17% answer for other three options. So kindly explain the answer. Uh, no, this is another question. Uh, I said this is another question. I think that's a question. No? So I did the poll of this question. I think that was the first question. A little bit. And let me go to that slide. Okay, one of the following is not a thimble chamber. Air free chamber, condenser chamber. Actually, uh, chamber actually the uh, Mopeshwar Saab sent me the question. So in that question, the first option is a parallel plate chamber. And the question is same, which we have shown before. The surface dose can accurately be measured by so the options uh, are parallel the plate, compact chamber, and extrapolation chamber. But it has no option uh, of parallel chamber. There is no option for parallel plate chamber. No, this is the first question. The chamber chamber is the first question. The second question, which you have shown uh, the slide. Uh, okay, okay. I did the poll of that question. Uh, in that okay. question, the option was given the parallel plate chamber, compact chamber, and extrapolation chamber. Hmm. Plain parallel chamber and extrapolation chamber, um, both of these, uh, these are uh, correct answers. Uh, actually, in this slide, I have not included the plain parallel chamber. Okay. Uh, so, plain parallel chamber and extrapolation chamber, both of these are correct answers. 
because in these two chambers are the chambers where um, that can be used in uh, dose build up uh, or in a region where dose gradient is high uh, because the spacing between the two electrodes is uh, um, very small uh, in these cases established both in extra chamber and plane parallel chamber however for free air ion chamber and correct chamber and farmer chamber um, the uh, all these chambers they uh, work on the principle of cavity theory and the principle of cavity theory is that there must be uh, the charged particle must exist so these uh, free air ion chamber compact chamber farmer type chamber which are thimble chamber three, they cannot uh, farmer chamber and farmer type chamber are thimble chamber and also free line chamber is very big. And they also have a, a requirement of uh, charge particle equilibrium. Uh, so these chambers cannot be used to measure surface dose metry. There is another question. What do you think? In which case, for which chamber stem effect is minimal? Condenser chamber, small field chamber, free air chamber, and farmer chamber. Asa, should I answer or? Yeah, I'll just wait a second. Uh... So uh, participant can go to the link. Uh, just give me two minutes. Uh, people are filling the option. Okay. So mostly the answers are small field chamber is 64% answer and the free ion chamber is 46%. Okay. Uh, in this correct answer is farmer type chamber because stem effect, you know, uh, stem effect occurs uh, when a stem or cable uh, or extracameral component of ion chamber these are radiated and uh, the when these are irradiated this extra camera current is produced and this is collected by the uh, collecting electrode however farmer type chamber guard rings guard electrodes are available and these guard electrodes are placed at the same potential uh, as that of uh, central electrodes so it would uh, not let uh, this extra camera uh, to pass to uh, collect electrode. So, farmer type chamber is the correct answer. In case of small field chamber, uh, stem effect becomes very high because mostly small field chambers are also used in uh, field direction. When all the stem, um, uh, the stem, when a significant length of stem and uh, uh, cable is being irradiated. Similarly, for free air ion chamber, stem effect uh, becomes very high. 
when we are using specially high energy radiation beams. So stem effect, pharma type chamber is a chamber where stem effect is minimal due to the presence of guard electrodes. So if we summarize this chapter, exposure is the measure of ionization introduced in air produced by photons and its used tension that is related to SI unit Coulomb per kg as one tension is equal to 0.5 weight into times per minus four Coulomb per kg. Free air ionization chamber is a standard ion chamber that is used for accurate dose measurement in low energy radiation beams. However, it has some um, uh, limitations that it can use for high energy, it cannot be used for multi-directional um, uh, radiation beams, and also it has a very bulky size, therefore it can be used only in a standard uh, dosimetry labs and cannot be used in a clinic due to its bulky size. Um, chambers that require calibration by standard chamber are called secondary chamber. Usually these are farmer or farmer type chambers. So exposure calibration factor of a secondary ion chamber converts its reading into exposure conjuns dry air in the sense of chamber. That is the basic principle of chemistry theory. Farmer or farmer type chips can be used to calibrate all energies that are usually used in radiation therapy. And various international protocols can be used for this purpose. For example, IAA, TRS-398, and TG-51, we can use the protocol for uh, calibration of radiotherapy beams. Electrometer is a charge measuring device that is connected to the collector electron of a thimble chamber. And uh, most commonly uh, used electrometers use negative feedback operational amplifiers that can be operated in three different modes, integrate mode, dose rate mode, and direct exposure um, mode. And uh, far type chambers can be used uh, for real time and dosimetry uh, with the help of uh, connecting cables that is long enough. And um, uh, type chamber is placed at the uh, radiation generating device, while these electrometers that give us a readout, it can be placed outside the uh, room of radiation generating uh, instrument uh, in on the console machine of machine. There are some special chambers like extrapolation chamber, parallel player chambers, then can that can be used to measure surface dose dose in and build up region. These are the regions where uh, dose gradients are high and uh, particle equilibrium does not exist here. And that is the basic requirement of uh, operation of thimble chambers. There are different factors and parameters that can affect in collection efficiency of uh, um, thimble chambers. Uh, but this effect is ion recombination uh, effect, and uh, ion recombination correction depends upon the chamber design, vice voltage, because if you increase the voltage, it can be decreased. Beam type, it is higher for electrons. Beam density, higher the beam density, higher would be ion recombination effect. And whether the beam is pulsed, scanned, or continuous. For pulsed, and per scan beam, this effect is high. If the number reading changes with the change in polarity uh, of its base voltage, it is called polarity effect. And the uh, polarity effect also depends most of all on all these parameters. However, for a reference chamber uh, used for reference dosimetry, its value must be less than 0.5%. Uh, for a chamber that is open to outside pressure and pressure of air, its reading must be corrected for environmental factor that is temperature and pressure as uh, 
told you in this equation. So temperature, pressure, correction factor needs to be applied. So this correction factor is relative to the environmental conditions specified the standard laboratories. These are some references. Thank you. Any question? So participant can unmute themselves and ask the question if you like. So I have a question. Uh, we used to uh, include the recombination and polarity effect in uh, during our dosimetry, but uh, we ignore stem effects. So why so, this kind of practice we used to do? Like we don't use uh, stem. Yes, please. There is a distortion in why. Are you talking about stem effect? Why we are not using uh, yes. stem correction effect? Yes. Okay. Okay. Actually, uh, stem correction, uh, stem effect becomes almost negligible uh, when we are using farmers. Because as I have already told you that uh, stem effect is very, very minimal when we are using guard rings. So, the polarity effect, uh, if we, uh, we see the stem effect and polarity effect in detail, the polarity effect also includes uh, the stem effect because stem effect arises due to uh, the extra cameral current and polarity effect also occurs uh, due to extra cameral uh, current that may uh, affect the uh, reading of the ion chamber when you are using different so this is the reason uh, that uh, we actually don't use uh, actually we are using stem effect but with the name of clarity effect that includes both the stem effect as well as okay, another question from the participant could you please explain again the effect of environmental conditions like I think temperature pressure. Yes. Let me share my slide. Uh, okay. As you know, exposure is the measure of measure of uh, ionization per unit mass of air. Okay. And if we see uh, it includes the density of air. It, it it also depends upon the density of air you know that is related to the s of air so uh, if we change the environmental conditions including temperature and pressure, density of air is changed. According to gas laws, you know, if we increase the pressure, density of air would be definitely increased. Similarly, air density can be increased if we increase the, uh, if we decrease the temperature of air. If air density is increased, mass would be increased and chamber reading would be higher more charge would be produced in a dense air or in a dense gas because it would be more number of particles in a given volume is it clear now uh, yes thank you ma'am uh, and thank you very much for your time uh, that you uh, as another question, so uh, explain how polarity effect depend on irradiation condition. 
polarity effect upon radiation. Okay. As I have already uh, told that uh, polarity uh, effect also includes the stem effect, right? Um, because when, we, when you will check the polarity effect in axial direction and in radial direction, and I've already told that in axial uh, direction, all the cable and the stem is being radiated and stem effect would be higher in axial direction and would be lower in radial direction. So um, what happens in polarity? What are the causes of polarity effect? Actually, uh, we, uh, for exposure measurement, we require the ionization produced by the uh, radiation beam, by the X-ray beam in the cavity of the air. We don't, we don't require any ionization that is produced uh, by components other than the air. Actually, the uh, principle of cavity, th principle uh, of uh, cavity chamber or air uh, pharma type chamber is that as we are measuring radiation in the absence of um, ion chamber, no perturbation in the presence of chamber. But uh, this is not practical, practically possible. We have tried to make uh, at chamber air equivalent, but as you know, uh, real or true air equivalence is not possible. There are some components of the chamber that are, of course, not equivalent to air. And these components could include metal of the uh, stem, it could include the cable that would be uh, carrying a charge from the electric to the electrometer. So when all these components of chamber are placed uh, within the beam, then they may perturb the they may affect, they may add or uh, reduce the charge that is truly uh, produced due to, due to the ionization of the air. For example, some content front, it is not desirable. True measurement of uh, radiation for true measurement of ionization produced due to the uh, this air. This Compton is produced when uh, Compton electrons are generated from the central electrode. Actually, we are uh, pretending like there is no central electrode and there is no uh, outer electrode and there is only air that of the chamber. But when this central electrode that is low energy, uh, low Z material, aluminum, when electrons are produced uh, or generated from this central electrode, then it may also uh, contribute to the ionization. And uh, depending upon the type of polarity, it may increase or decrease uh, the collector current. For example, if we are collecting the electrons, then the collector current would be increased. And if we are collecting the positive ions, then collector current would be decreased. So uh, this is the polarity effect. And also there is an other uh, component called as extra chemical current that is produced, uh, that is same as stem effect. Uh, the current produced inside in the stem of the uh, this chamber. So again, if we are collecting the electrons, then uh, this collector current would be increased. And if we are collecting the uh, ions, this collector current would be decreased. And collection of ions or electrons, it depends upon the uh, polarity that we are using. So to correct for this, Thing we can measure the, uh, we can, uh, we need to calculate the polarity correction factor. If there is no Compton uh, current and there is no extra Campbell current, then polarity correction factor would be one. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, we now are going to end uh, this session. Uh,
thank you very much for your participation and uh, you spare your precious time with us. It's 